of communicating with the dog that the dog really does understand. The problem is you must be very consistent uh, and you must be fair. So you must release the pressure when the dog is correct and apply the correct amount of pressure when the dog is incorrect. And like I said, that will change um, based on circumstances and sometimes just based on the mood of the dog that day. Um, they have good days and bad days just like we do. And some days I wake up and my dogs are just on fire, right? They just want to go 90 to nothing. They don't want to listen. They don't want to wait at the door. And you'll have days like that. Everybody does. Um, but through being consistent is where you'll get solid results. Now I'm going to work her around. And so this will be a change up. It may take her a minute to get into the mindset of working because we've done a lot of obedience up to this point um, in the pen with the stock. And um, that's okay, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just work these sheet from corner to corner. Uh, I'm not really gonna be trying to send her around at this point um, because she is still working pretty close to the stock. And I'd like to develop a little bit more teamwork with her as in her working, as in her working with me to get something accomplished versus me pushing on her all the time. Um, so you don't wanna be demotivating to a dog um, and always be pushing on them. You want to kind of let them figure out the jobs a little bit and um, learn that they can work with you. And I think a lot of people end up using their dogs in this manner anyway because they um, perhaps do a lot of pin work or do a lot of small jobs with the dogs. And the dogs don't really have to get out and do big gathers, things like that. So this works really well. Um, the concept behind this is we are going to try to get a job. Hey! Ah, ah. So, there it was. I said she can make a good decision and stay there and the pressure's completely off, or she can make the wrong decision and the pressure's on. She's tuned in to me, which is why that correction got her attention. Uh, if she, when you go home, if she is not completely tuned in to you and, tr and you are not getting the responses out of her that, that I can get, then you may not be able to correct her from back here. You may have to walk all the way up to her and actually get her attention face to face almost. Um, and then, But once she believes that you will do it, that will change and you'll be able to get that um, correction from a different um, place. So all I had to do was give her a little uh-uh and walk, I don't know, maybe walk three steps and she stopped her forward motion. And I immediately released the pressure. She went back into the down, uh, which is all I wanted her to do, right? So it wasn't, she's not in trouble for fixating on the goat. She's not in trouble for trying to go to work. She's in trouble for not staying in her down, which is what I asked her to do. Okay, so, uh, you know, people get really confused about that. They're like, I don't want to ever correct my dog on stock because I don't want to take the drive out of him. Well, she wasn't allowed to be on stock, right? I didn't ask her to go to stock. She took that upon herself. And this is part of learning self-control is that she has to learn that we don't get to work until I say it's time to work. Um, so that was just a good example of um, her making a mistake and me being able to get that correction on her and get her focused back on what we were doing. 